table legs. It's it's mostly like what Nigel kind of asked me for was more to uh, you know show you how I use the spindle roughing gouge and and the skew to to make basically a straight taper, uh, which happens to be a table leg. Now I, I do make you know several of these, uh, and uh, um, the biggest thing that you want to do when you're making something repetitively is use jigs and fixtures. Okay, so. In order to make all my table legs exactly the same length, I, I use my chop saw and I just make a little uh, uh, jig that I, I clamp this onto my onto my, my, my chop saw and then you know just obviously put the piece in there. I got long lengths of it, whatever length may be, boom, 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 just cut them all and cut them all to length, right? So, so that's the first thing that you want to do. Um, now once I've got them to length, the you want to find the center, right? So there's there's several ways that they can find the center on things, and if everything's nice and square, uh, it's fairly easy to do it. Uh, if I can actually find my ruler here, there we go. In case anything straight over. Um, so if it's nice and straight, you can just you know find find across the corners, draw your line across the corners. But quite frequently, you don't actually have a nice square piece. You got the corners are missing, whatever. So you just get a little block, a square block of wood, make your lines across. You have to go around four times, of course. And then you end up with, uh, I don't know if you can actually see it on the screen or not, but a nice little cross in the middle that allows you then to draw your line to get the center marks. So now, a lot of people would just say, oh, I just you know, kind of eyeball it and stuff. But as you can see, the diameter or the, the cross section of this wood is not terribly large and it's not a whole lot larger than what I actually need for the finished dimensions. So I don't want to be wasting, wasting any wood. And if it's too big, then you're just wasting time cutting wood that you don't actually need. So I'll just do it this way and get my lines in there. And of course, accuracy does count because if you are not actually in the middle, then you're not going to be getting a very nice round. Well, you'll get it round eventually, but you're going to waste a lot more wood. If that's for me, I'm busy, okay? Um, okay, so the next thing would be, of course, we have to mark, you know, we can go to the center point, but uh, I like to use the all since uh, uh, I actually won this at the demo uh, that we had here uh, with uh, Pierre and, uh, and Roy. A little hard to see with the light there, but uh, so we just want to get it nice, little starting point in there. Let's put a starting point in on this side. Okay. Now, before we start on that, there's a couple of things that are uh, slightly different on here. A couple of people asked me about it already. Uh, what I have at the front uh, on my uh, chuck here is just an extension. I guess it's a, a three-inch extension or something. It's not necessary uh, for doing a spindle like this, although I like to have the extra space uh, working on my left-hand side just so that, you know, um, I think the head uh, on my leg might be slightly different than this and gives me a little bit more elbow room for the way I work. Uh, but I do really like it for when I'm doing any kind of uh, bowls or platters and I want to be able to get in and work at the back surface of this. So a little extension on there that, uh, that fits uh, and I enjoy. The, um, the tailstock, the life center here, I don't know if you can uh, uh, zoom in on this or maybe I'll just pull it up a little bit. Okay. Can you see it in the picture better? So you can see this is a slightly different one, right? Uh, usually it's got a little cup and, and the point right in the middle. And uh, um, what that was doing, when I, when I make my final diameter on the, on the bottom of this, it's about uh, seven eighths of an inch diameter. Uh, which is just a little bit larger than what that uh, ring on the live center is. I think it's close to uh, close to three quarters or stuff. But it also was leaving a fairly deep dent in the bottom 
and, and it doesn't aesthetically wasn't very good. So I, I looked around and I, and I found this uh, center that uh, one way actually sells. It uh, comes in a kit of three different ones. So they got this one nice pointy one. Uh, one of them that's uh, almost flat with just a little teeny uh, nib at, uh, at the end of it, very sharp for holding very delicate things. And the third one was, uh, I don't know if I've ever used it, so just in a drawer. <laughs> so, um, so the first thing that I want to do then is actually drill out um, the I guess I'll tell you why I'm going to drill it out. So, this being a table leg, it uses a, what's called um, a furniture screw, uh, I think they call it. Um, so, it's got a machine thread on one side and a wood screw on the other side. Okay. Hanger bolt, that's it. That's right. That's right. So, um, they're mounted with hanger bolts. And um, what I found, you know, I was trying to do, you know, just holding it in a chuck or, a, or in a drive center or whatever the case may be. Uh, but that was very difficult to, to, to get that line up all the time. So what I did is I made a little chuck uh, that has a hanger bolt in it, right? So uh, the, the machine part, uh, I've got one of these uh, threaded uh, fastener uh, hooky things that go in the back. And uh, you know, jammed that in there and actually it loosened up the time, so I, I actually glued it in there. And um, the hanger bolt uh, wood thread side comes out the other side. so. I just drill a hole uh, that fits this, and then I'll thread it in there afterwards. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just put that in there. Now, generally speaking, um, I mean, these pieces aren't too bad, but sometimes you got a little bit of defects in there, maybe you have some weird grain or something, um, maybe a crack. So you want to you you know, make sure that uh, you're, you're going to you know, get the best end in the end, the biggest end, which is the end that's going to go into the chuck. So this one doesn't really make much difference. So we'll put it in whichever one. So this uh, particular drill bit I have here, I forget the actual name of it, but it's uh, the one that's got the nice big sharp uh, sort of brad. Uh, it's got the uh, brad drill, it's got a nice pointy, uh, pointy bit on it. Um, I, I was using um, regular ones before, uh, and I, I thought, well, maybe if I have a nice pointy bit that you know lines it up, uh, it'll help. And eh, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it depends on where the grain goes, and you know sometimes the end's not perfectly flat, and there's, there's all kinds of things that uh, that happen on that. So I'm just going to drill this out now. That's in there fairly tight. As you can see, I just put a tape on here. That's how deep I want to drill the hole. So again, I want to minimize uh, the thinking that has to be done on each one of these because when I do it, I make a batch of them, right? So I uh, typically will run this uh, a little bit faster than that. But, uh, <laughs> um, usually at around, I don't know, 300, 400. It can go fairly quick because it is a fairly small diameter here. I like to keep a little bit of tension just to, um, on the on the quill here to make sure that there's no slack that's going on. Slowly go into it. Keep your hand on the chuck itself. You usually don't have to actually you know bring it out. Ooh, yeah, smoking. Okay. So that's uh, fairly quick. That's all it takes. We'll do both of them at the same time. I know you're not supposed to leave the end in there because it can be dangerous, but uh, I've got my hand right here, so I know I'm not going to turn it on. Okay. Pressure in there. Put this thing up. Slide them off. Now, this is a table that didn't make it, so I uh, use it to protect my drill bit. So, uh, 
most of the time, the only drilling I do is when I'm making these, so I just leave it like this in my drawer all the time. So. Yeah. Okay, so. Now, um, since I use this repetitively, uh, I, I marked the number one jaw on here. Always a good thing to do if you want to put things back where they, where they go. Um, it is a piece of maple, but I've used it so many times, I was starting to get you know, dense in the uh, where I put the jaws anyways. So I just uh, went in there and used Damiano's favorite adhesive, uh, CA glue, to <laughs> solidify it a little bit there. And, uh, um, and it's, it, it worked really well. It's much more solid now, and it's not making any dents at all. So. Now, you'll notice I also have a line up the side here. Okay. Um, it's for a very specific reason, and you'll, you'll see it later, but you might not be able to see it when I'm turning it. Is I'll, I'll use that to uh, to know where I am when I've done a complete revolution, sanding, or or doing whatever, so that I, I know exactly where I am all the time and don't have to uh, keep going back and forth and, or keep going around and around. Although, it's always going around and around. <laughs> okay. So that's kind of a nice and tight. Nope. Yeah, regular ones. Um, you know, and you can you can see the serrations in there. Uh, I I think I have a pair of dovetail jaws, but I've never actually used them. Uh, you know. so, okay, so you know. Okay, so I want to lock the head in there because I want I've got to thread this on there, and it's a little bit of. A little bit of work to actually get that on there. Mm -hmm. Bring this guy up like this, tighten him up just a little bit. Put just a little bit of pressure on here because when it's loose, it actually does move in the ways, uh, surprisingly. But uh, any little thing to try to keep it going straight. So now I'm going to pull this while, I, while I'm threading it in there. Keeps the light up. Keeps the what, sorry? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So now he's in there tight. I'll slide that off. And even at that, you can see he moves just a teeny weeny little fraction when I let the pressure off. I'll just give him a little tap like that. Now he's nicely lined up and see what happens. Okay. So, now, the reason I just did that, so what I did was I loosened it off and, and I, I pushed it so that my wheel handle is in. Um, say about one o'clock position. Because sometimes it still manages to you know, vibrate loose and it will loosen up, so this actually saves a, a little bit of tightening. So now, just tighten this guy down like this. Put a little bit of pressure on the back. And we're almost ready to, to roll. Good, mm -hmm. it's not turned on yet. Because the first thing you always do is, oh, oh, yeah, it's still not ready. Okay. Okay. The first thing you do is turn it on and squeal with the belt. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, one other thing that uh, I was looking for um, uh, when, I, when I started setting up here is um, fairly regularly, I actually will file the top of my tool rest. Um, because you can see, I can even see it on here, there's, there's dings and nicks in here from people going bang with their, with their chisels and gouges and stuff. So I will uh, usually file that off. I, I, I put uh, some sandpaper to it to, uh, to try to help that because when you're trying to do a really nice cut, particularly with a skew, because I mean, with a spindle roughing gouge, it, it, it won't matter because it's a big round surface. But on this one, you hear it? Right? So there's, there's a series of, 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 of dings in there, so uh, not so good, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, so. Now, we'll start with the uh, spindle roughing gouge because uh, um, that's what I started with when I was making these. And um, I guess, like most other people, the skew was a very frightening tool for me. Um, had a couple of nice catches and put it on the shelf for a little while, pulled it out again, had a couple of nice catches, put it on the shelf again, and uh, you know, so on and so forth as the, the game goes, right? But as I, I've been making these legs, I, I keep looking at it going, I know I should be using a skew to do this, okay? So I kept on practicing and practice. But 
there's good reasons to use the spindle roughing gouge, okay? Uh, because as the name would imply, it's, it's really for roughing things down to round, spindles in particular. And the, the big reason is, I don't know if you can see, can you, can you zoom down on this? Uh, no zoom, okay. Well, there is, as you can see the, the shape, right? Uh, it's a nice U shape. So if you actually present the tool like this to the wood, um, the sides of the, of the spindle roughing gouge actually cut the wood before the bottom, okay? And what that does is it, it actually makes a nicer cut. So you're actually trimming off the edges before you start cutting the, the diameter of the wood. And the reason that's good is because if you just went in there, even if you went on and you're at an angle with this, you can get really big chip outs. Uh, it'll, it'll take the corner off for, you know, two, two three inches easily. Uh, otherwise, you've got to go in and start you know, putting little nicks down the length of it so that, so that you break it up. If you actually go in with it in, in this uh, profile here, you can see that it just kind of takes, takes a U-shaped cut out of the wood, and it cuts the wood instead of actually breaking off the corners. Okay. So with that, we'll see if we can. Any what? Sorry. Skating. Skating. Mm -hmm. like, you know, as you're cutting, you're, it pulls one side or the other. No. No. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. nope. No. I've never had that problem. Mm -hmm. I've had every other problem you could think of. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really a problem. It's just getting. So it's, it's pulling. It's pulling you to. Uh, the right. Yeah. Depending on how you're holding. Well, I mean, once you start, once you've cut the corners off, uh, then you start to point in the direction that you want to go, right? Okay. So, let's see. One more middle gauge here, I guess. Right? Uh, okay. Okay, so on there nice and solid. Kind of bottle. Hmm. When you fill it up too much, that's when it, it starts to bounce away from the actual wood. So uh, normally I wouldn't keep my hand as close, but uh, okay. And on the last one, you say I started off going uh, left to right to make sure that I wouldn't chip off on that side. Now we're going to go the other way, right to left, to make sure we don't chip out too much on this side. Okay, so we're almost down the round. Now we actually stop the lathe and just put on that. Wow, that's a short deceleration. You can see a long deceleration. Right? Okay, so we just move it in a little bit here. What do you normally run the lathe back as well? Um, somewhere. When I start start the roughing at about maybe 18, 1800, uh, I'll uh, increase the speed a little bit as I, as I get around. Anywhere hey, 18 to 2200, because uh, uh, it's such a small band. Right? So. Probably, probably okay, so just make yourself, a, you know, if you're if anything you're making, if you're making it repetitively, just make yourself a quick and dirty uh, uh, jig to check things, right? A go, no go. So this one, you can see I got several, several sizes on there. Uh, I used to, you know, divide it up into three so that I could, you know, check my sections a lot easier. As as you get the hang of you can kind of get your angle a little bit better. Mostly I'll check just the end one, the front one, every now and then uh, one in the middle just to make sure. So, uh, um, and just to make sure that they're all the same length, the you know, diameters, because if you're holding them together, you can tell if they're not the same size, right? Once they're assembled on a big table, you'd never see, but uh, 
Uh, you certainly want them to start off uh, at least looking the same size if somebody is actually checking their work. And all I'm doing there is I'm just checking to see if it's uh, completely round yet. Okay, so it's pretty good. That should be good. Yeah, just want to see. Okay, so you can see I just got it round, and there's just just enough left meat left on there, right? So we're uh, we're not wasting any wood. And then one of the reasons is so this is a um, uh, four quarter rough. Okay, so it's uh, an inch and an eighth. Uh, well. The, uh, no, no, it's uh, six quarters. Okay, so it's uh, um, a little over uh, six and five eighths, maybe. And my final diameter is supposed to be about one and three eighths. Okay, so there's not a lot of extra meat on there for uh, when you're starting starting to go uh, put that round. Okay, so we're getting there. Okay, perfect. Okay, and we just see how much we got to get rid of there. Now, one of the things I normally will do is, and I slow it down really, is, so I know it's 12 inches long, so I put a, I'll just put a mark, pencil mark on there, and another pencil mark at the midpoint, six inches. Right, so that way I can easily go in with my jig, just whoop, check it. Okay, it's not there yet uh, without having to measure and find out where, where the point is. Okay. Now one of the things I, I, I mean, roughing gouges, spindle roughing gouges, they're, they're okay. And you know, they can actually give you a nice cut, right? I mean, this is actually very smooth right here. Um, but what I found is it's really hard for me, anyways, to get a long, continuous, straight line cut with this little uh, surface. So, I mean, I might hold it a little different than with some people. So, I can see, I, I typically I'll have my finger up fairly close, right? I like to hold uh, my, my gouges very close to the, uh, to the uh, ferrule. Um, keep it close to your body, but I also like to keep it close under my forearm because my forearm does a lot of the controlling of it. Now, I'm not cutting a bullet here, so I don't have to worry about high forces, right? Um, and I'll typically keep a finger only right on the tool, uh, tool post, the uh, tool rest here, and, and keep that uh, to line up the tool and using the rest of my body to actually hold everything straight. So, I mean, I can see it's fat in the middle here, but we just want to see we're getting close there. So we're going to just take some more out of the middle here. Okay, I'm getting there. 
And of course, you're always looking at the horizon when you're cutting here. Pretty close. So what we're going to do is, well, so now it's supposed to be a straight taper, right? So I want a straight taper. So I got a straight edge, right? Which is a machine straight edge. And then what I do is I'll look through to see where any high spots are. I don't know if any, any of you can see that. It's probably harder when your eyes are closed, but, uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, you suck, you suck the yeah, I got you. I know you were squinting to see it, right? Uh, <laughs> okay, so, so there's a little bump there, and uh, there's a little bit in the middle where I know it's still fast. So I'm just going to take this bump off here. So I just like. No, no, no. <laughs> and there's a, there's a place for sandpaper, don't get me wrong, but you don't want to start there yet. Mm -hmm. right, so I'm just going to take off this little bump here. Let me just check that again, so you're actually looking. Well, at least this thing would slow down a little bit. Yeah, it's in, it's in the... It's on the fast mode. Try it now. Yeah, because it says long, short, and the switch goes this way or that way. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so we'll, we'll try this way. Try out the switch. Yeah. So there's still a teeny little bump there. And uh, otherwise it's looking pretty good there. So we'll just shoot the uh, little bit there. Pretty good there. Pretty good there. So we'll just take that bump out and see how she looks. You can take a little bump so is one of the things I don't really like doing with the uh, spindle roughing out, but I like to only use one tool, right? If you have to keep changing tools, that's kind of a kind of a pain in the ass also for getting things done. So I don't like to spend the roughing couch. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I made a mess there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so 
So is it slowing down faster that time? I think so, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good enough for um, this. Look, I'm sure she's doing it. Okay, so there's virtually no light that's going through there. So the only time it will change your tool is I like to put just a little bit of radius on the, uh, on the bottom end here. I think it's pretty straight, right? So what I'll do is, again, now I'm finding my uh, my mark that I put on here so that I know uh, where it is. You can put a little line across here. This is, I don't know what they call it, some uh, refillable or some kind, of, some kind of weird marker thing, chalk type thing, but it's kind of a waxy type of thing. But, uh, um, so is that. Now what I'll do is, with a, with a straight piece of, uh, this is a, a piece of maple flooring, Right. So just to see where the high point points actually are. So I'll just very quickly whip that by there. Go back to my mark. And you can see there's a couple of spots, but for the most part, it was taken it out. And, and uh, I don't know if you can actually you can see that, yeah? so it's not too bad. Right? So So now, now I don't think we, we don't want to do a whole lot of sanding here, right? So, uh, yeah. Well, we'll just do a little, I'm going to slow it down here. We'll just do a little bit to get rid of the line so you can actually see it a little bit better, what it looks like. Right, because you can see where I actually uh, hit it with the sandpaper, right? There's kind of shinier spots, right? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can see there's just a couple of little ones that are left. So now my sanding routine is always the same, though. Okay. So I did it clockwise. Oops. I'll go counterclockwise. See already that it's uh, you know it's coming up pretty good. So I mean I'm not going to spend a lot of the time sanding it here because we don't want to make that much sand dust. Right? So, so now after all I've done that, I always go you now I go back to my line on here. Now with the grain. my shop, I, I will use compressed air between uh, grits to blow anything out so you don't have any uh, uh, weird grits uh, um, stuck in the, in the wood anymore. So, so we'll pretend that I actually sanded through all the grits. I mean, so that was 120. I'll go 120, 180, 40, and, and I stop there, okay? And each one, same same thing, forward, reverse, put the grain, forward, reverse, put the grain. And then the last step would actually be, so at the 240, um, then a water bottle, spritz, 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 I'll wipe it down to raise the grain, okay? 
And I'll do that at the, only at the 240 step. If you do that before, I think you're basically wasting your time. Um, so I'll do that only in the final step just to, to make sure that uh, raise the grain, then I'll go through the 240 forward, reverse with the grain. So then the last step would then, of course, be to take off the end and then would actually you know, sand the end. So I would just quickly sand the end, do, 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 and I can do a lot of it because I'm going to finish that off another time. And slow down the speed, grab a hold, and take it off. Right? <laughs> okay, so so that's that's how I do with spindle roughing it. Okay. So now as I said, you know, I kept saying, no, this can I do that with a, with a, with a, with a skew? The I mean, skew gives you such a nice, nice finish most of the time. And even if I don't start with a, a better grit, I'm going to be starting with a, a more uniform surface. Or that was my thought anyway. I was hoping I could get it up to a better grit. But starting at 120 is not too bad. Okay, so I'll just line up the tool rest with the mark I put on there earlier, so I don't have to put another one on there. Now, in the case of a skew, let me put this guy away. Now, my personal preference is I like to have my tool rest higher for the skew. Okay, so I mean that's just the way I do it, and uh, I got I got used to doing it that way, and I kind of like doing it that way. It looks a little different on this lathe than it does on my my lathe, so I want to just go uh, with here. So. Now to bring it down to round, a skew is actually really efficient. And I, I never, you know, really got the hang of doing that until we, we, we saw the Eric Lofstrom um, uh, remote demo, where he's, you know, I mean, he looks weird the way he moves. He does all these like really exaggerated motions and stuff and, you know, explains all the theory of you know, kinematics or whatever the heck he calls that stuff. And, uh, but, the way he was roughing down uh, square pieces totally blew me away. I said, wow, I got to do that because uh, that's really, really efficient. So essentially what he does is he's just going to go in there and you know, uh, have the skew parallel to, to the piece. And he's got his knees really, really bent. And he just kind of lifts up and, and goes into a parallel peeling cut, which is, um, I don't know if this is a... Higher, a little bit higher than my lathe, so it's a little, little weird. When I was crouching, it felt a little high, but well, we'll see. Let's see what happens. Okay, so obviously way too slow. So we're going to go up to about there. Okay. <laughs> so, so we're going to go down nicely, nice and pretty low here, and you know, we're going to come up. And as as I extend my my uh, my legs, I'm going to like. Tilt the knife into into the piece to get a good peeling cut. Okay, so I don't know if it's just me, but I have a bad habit of like sticking my belly out when I'm when I'm cutting instead of you know sticking my butt out. So so I call it the stick my butt out pose, and I, I make sure I gotta change my balance. Okay, so there we go. I gotta say, that's a pretty quick way of getting something down around. I mean, that's, you know, 
I mean, and it looks rough, and it, it is rough, you know. But I mean, that, that's that's all it was. It was a roughing cut to get it down around. So I'll just move that in a little bit closer now. No. <laughs> Good thing my sharp corner machined it in my uh, jig there. Okay. Okay, so we want to get this nice and round. So. so now there's something else that uh, I'm pretty sure was Art Lofstrom uh, was showing it. Uh, a little dirty there. Okay, covering up the badge. So. Um, is with the skew, you can cut both ways, which totally freaked me out. You know, it's just like, I mean, it seems counterintuitive that, okay, I cut this way, I cut everything with the sharp edge going that way, but I can pull uh, the skew back the other way and it cuts not as good, uh, or at least not for me, it doesn't. But the thing for me that I have to pay attention to is when I'm cutting with the edge, I look at the horizon. But when I'm, when I'm pulling it back, I look at the cutting edge. Because I don't know if it's just me, but I have a habit of kind of tilting when I'm, when I'm pulling it back, and I've gotten you know a lot of uh, catches on, on the pointy end. So, so I look, I change where I look. Okay, so it's come by. Now we just kind of come back without changing anything, except where I'm looking. Okay, so we're down to round. See how close we are. See, now that's actually small, so that means that piece was actually at a round. Or, or it was a thin part on the uh, on the wood, which which does happen. So if I was actually making these, I would have rejected him, but. Uh, Probably because I'm putting too much pressure uh, on the uh, on the bevel. Better? Okay. I could have been putting less pressure too. <laughs>
Not 35, so let's uh, see what the bumps are looking like. Do you normally wear, like, breathing protection? Or yes. Okay. Yes, always. Because yeah. I noticed you're sniffing, that's why I was wondering. Yeah, well, that really gets to me, too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty good, but I can see there's a little bit of bump there. It's harder with these lights. I usually have a light that kind of points right behind where I am uh, instead of right in my eyes. <laughs> Feels pretty good. Looks good. <coughs> and now we'll just put a little radius down the bottom there. I did it at a couple of points, but um, you kept your other hand away from the tip of the couch. But this time with the uh, with the skew, yeah, yeah, with the skew um, because is it good to put your hand right onto the next to the tool? Well, I mean, it's it's in front of the the tool, right? So no, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a very common way to do it. It steadies the whole thing, and you get a much better cut. Uh, you, so you, you need to put your hand there. Study it. Yes. Yeah. It's. I mean, you could put a you know a spindle steady breast if you want, but I mean, um, it works much better with your hand. And uh, you know, if you're um, if you're doing it and, and your hand's getting hot, it means you're applying too much pressure. So you just slack it off, and it's just it's just there balancing it. It's under total control. I'm, I'm not the least bit concerned that I'm going to slip off there and cut my cut my hand. Not with this. I'd be more concerned about getting my fingers stuck underneath. Me. <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah, no, that's, that's not a problem though. Okay, so I got that uh, line up there. And you know, once again, we'll just go in there, see where the high spots are. Okay, just one quick shot across to see. Uh... All right, so, I mean, you can see there's a little bit over here, a little bit there, a little bit there, but I mean, that'll uh, all come up pretty, pretty darn quick. I guess that's one of the things that you get used to, uh, I guess, no matter what you're turning, whether it be a ball, a spindle, or, or a platter, or anything, you get to, to know the wood and, and, and what kind of defects, if you will, the sandpaper will take out and how fast it'll take it out. And if it's going to take too long, well, you might as well take another cut uh, because there's no point in, in just standing around sanding, you know, so...
send it too, too, too much because black walnut is a known sensitizer. Yeah. Once you get it, it's just a subsequent. Yeah. And you can see, basically, I mean, there's a couple of shiny spots here, but other than that, um, so here's my, you know, and, and you can see that we didn't get to that point yet, and that would come up very quickly. Otherwise, it's there's no more white marks across the line, right? So it's all gone. It would just be now a question of going with the grain one more time, step through the uh, uh, the different grits, and, uh, and uh, it's done. So... So I guess that's basically it, well, because I don't want to. I don't want to keep sanding because, like you said, the sandpaper is just uh, the sawdust on this is just too uh, too nasty. So, uh, any questions? Good. Is the um, extent uh, commercial uh, Yes, this is a one way a one way extension. The part number is on there. Uh, I'm sure they have it for all the different um, uh, chuck thread sizes. Um, I just happen to have the M33, same as what this is. So uh, uh, it's definitely standard for them. But uh, I'm sure they, they do have them, and uh, I, I have another one too that was uh, manufactured uh, by uh, by somebody else. There we go. All right. Good.